check he's got his handbrake on so he doesn't go rolling down the yard. Didn't see you there, it's Thomas Edward, that's me that is. And welcome to part three of, of Noel, the MG ZR, the Bell. Wow, well, it's part three of Noel's build, and today is the biggie, what we've been waiting a long, long time for. He's going to get his front end refreshed with a, a, a genuine uh, ZR front bumper, what we got from our friend Maddie in Scotland. And not just the front bumper, got a wing, and there's another wing behind camera, what's a freshly painted one. This is one we, uh, a very rare find just down the road. This came off an original X-Power. But the one behind the screen was a red one out of a scrapper and we had to go and spray it. So uh, Noel is going to be transformed today in front of you in your very own uh, front room. So uh, let's get on with it. So how I'm going to start this today is uh, now uh, he's been crashed in his front corner, previous owner, and he's, he's, he's done a, a drift spec thing here, a bit chavvy. But, the way I'm going to do it is, you can get the bumper off without taking the wings off, but for the, for the, because I'm taking everything off, I'm going to take the wings off first, and then I'm going to take the bumper off, and then when I put it back together, the wings will go on first, and then the new bumper will go back on, so it's all tickety-boo. Um, so uh, I want to tackle the most worst uh, wing on the uh, driver's side first. And it's not just uh, it's had a, pring, a prang, it's uh, nothing down there, and it's all a bit... Yeah. It's had a few salty winters and it's destroyed it like a lot of ZRs are on these wings. These wings go f first before the other one goes. So um, what it, what it can, uh, consists of is uh, 10 mil bolts along the top here, three of them. Then there's one in here, one in here, one at the bottom wing. Uh, and then there's the arch line has got to come out. So to get all that off, I've got to jack it up with my three ton jack and, and put it on axle stands, take the wheels off so I can get the arch liners off. But if you, if you, uh, if you know your 160s, a 160 comes with side skirts. But prior, prior to coming here and doing today's video, I've took the uh, sills off, took them off, and I was very pleasantly uh, surprised that Noel here his sills are pretty solid, except one bit where it's had it been welded up in the past. But he's pretty solid underneath. Uh, so he bought it with the cheapest MG ZR in the country. We've got a, we've got a good one here. It's just cosmetic bits, but he's solid underneath. Um, so yeah, let's get it jacked up. Check he's got his handbrake on so he doesn't go rolling down the yard. Now on, the, on this, I'm going to jack it up on the front subframe. So I can get all the front end up. And then I can put these stands underneath. So uh, before I jack it up, I was getting ahead of uh, get a, a, ahead of myself there. I've got to I've got to unloosen these uh, nuts on these uh, front wheels because uh, the uh, be very difficult when he's up in the air to get them off. Now we've actually got some uh, some uh, better straights waiting uh, on a friend's car down south, but he hasn't got these. He hasn't got his aftermarket wheels on yet, so I don't know when we'll get them. So if anyone's got any uh, original straights you want to give them away and they're better than ours, drop me a comment below. I've got them, I've got them unloosened. Now I can jack up, now we can, yeah, I won't go into that. <coughs> on Beavers and Butthead, on Do America, they're in the boot of a, a car, what they uh, got chucked in the back of, and they're in the middle of this, uh, going down this highway and he's got, the, he's got the jack, he's got the jack out and he's jacking up and he popped the boot. Oh. I'm jacking off. <laughs> Jack. So when you put your stands underneath your car, you have on your sill you have a like a, a seam and you sit it on that. 
Now I don't want to set it too close to the front because I need to get this wing off and there's a, a bolt there. So I'll put them about there. That's about getting this. Click them off a bit. And you always make sure you're on flat ground. No, no, no cronk, uh, no, uh, what do you call it? Shale or anything or rough ground. Always get some nice flat ground. And it, so it'll be all nice and secure. I'd leave the jack under it on the stands as a safety uh, measure. But today, because I've got to pull the bumper off, I'm going to actually pull, actually pull the jack out. But I've got the stands under it are quite big stands. And we'll slowly come, now slowly come down. Always, uh, always remember to put your nuts where you remember them, otherwise you'd lose them. <coughs> what do you call them? Mud flaps. What well, they're awful. So uh, well, we'll start with the driver's wing. And uh, the first thing is I want to do, and probably this bumper will just fall off now, is that I want to snip this. What's uh, holding it up with uh, a drift uh, thing. Quick release bumpers, I think the uh, the term is. That's it's off, it's dry over there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, right now I'm going to try and pull. I'm going to pull the arch liner out because this arch liner is actually knackered. You've got to pull them out to get the wing off. But I'm going to fully pull this out because normally you can just leave one in the middle and you you can pull them out like that, and then you can get to all your bits. But I've got a new arch liner behind camera because this is shot underneath down here. So I'm going to pull it out. Now there's some screws up here, and then the rest are all like black plastic tab things. There's about six of them all together. So. We'll do that next, and they're always a pain to do. So uh, I've, I'm going to call in the, the, the use of the angle grinder man to cut these out because I can't get them out because they're totally shot. So I see he's, well, he's not actually angle grinding, we're just cutting this because this wing, it doesn't matter about those screws because we're going to pull the wing off and it's going to get scrapped anyway. So, uh, but these are these are little sods. These are these ones. These little trim clips in here. They don't do anything. So, what you're gonna do? Use something like this. Now, I, I, I'm doing a bit of a crude job here of cutting them out with some uh, some snips. I've took somewhat over on the uh, uh, arch liner tabs out. There's one still in, but I'm just gonna pull the ring off and then pull it off. Two in the, the door jam, so there's one here at the top. There's one right underneath as well. And these are always these are always rusty. So plan B is we're gonna do what I did on my first wing was uh, snap it off and then get that off after. What happens when you get British rusty cars? It's, it just becomes right pain. There is normally two under here. This bit here, there's normally two bolts under there, what you see in that hole and that hole, but because it's been in a small accident, it's uh, non-existent anymore. So uh, all it needs now is pull it off, but snap it at the bottom. Oh, the wing bracket. The wing bracket's still on it, but... Yeah. Now I might have to pull that off there actually. So in there, this bit here, there's a bracket. Now it's called the wing bracket. Now you probably think I'm doing a right crude job of doing this, and I should have took that at first. But looking how rusty it was, I thought I could just get away with snapping it off because I thought that would be already crashed off because it's been in a small accident. But obviously it's still hanging on for dear life. So pull this up. <laughs> See, that comes off that little bracket, and there's a little bracket there, that there. One power saving bracket off. Wings off. Just need to wiggle it off from it. 
Off. One rusty wing off. Uh, scrap bin. Anyone want a chav indicator? You're welcome to it, but I don't want it. One night arch liner off. I'm going to take these. There's a nut here. These two are uh, driver's light nuts, so you don't need to take them out. There's one here. One here. There's one there there and then there's another one of them on the other side then i got to go underneath and take the bottom ones out now i am going to be putting brand new nuts in here stainless steel so we don't rust up and we don't have all these problems of snapping heads and uh, messing about now you're probably thinking wow you put penetrating fluid on wow what you haven't seen behind the scenes is i've been uh, penetrating them for like days but obviously it still hasn't worked on some of them it's like wheel of dealers this is, we've got, got two men on the job because we're running out of time, we're running, we've got, only got about an hour and a half hour light left and uh, we've got to drive home in this so uh, we're doing a bit of, uh, as if you get if you're any American watchers out there, we're doing a bit of road kill. Now I'm going to repeat the same on this side, get it stripped back, get it off and I'll see you then because it's just to repeat the same sort of process in uh, in reverse but probably not as uh, brutal as i just did the last one so i'll see you in a minute so it's off it's uh it's uh, now it's looking a bit bare it's a bit naked i think the word is now uh some of that i might show some of that i might not show because i did a bit of a crude job and uh, cut a few corners just to get it off because we've only got like an hour and a bit to get before it goes dark um so actually if you i'll bring the camera over here still got the wing on it's just me cutting corners to get, and they're, they're too rusty anyway, because if you look around the back of here, in there somewhere, there's two nuts and they're totally rusty. So I just took it off it as one big uh, lump. One of the things I was worried about when we took the bumper off originally was this crash bar, if it was, had a, when he caught it in, the, uh, in, that, in that snowy storm, the previous owner, when he crashed the front corner, I was worried this would be bent. But it's not, it's straight. So that's a that's a Brucey bonus. That's Brucey bonus that is, so that's straight. And all these these little crash bits at the back are straight as well. So that's good that is. Um so yeah, that's a, a naked uh, front of Noel. We well, like that. And now um I'm gonna put the, the new bumper on first and then put the wings on. But first we're gonna go around and spray a load of grease everywhere. So it, will, it won't go rusty again. So that's the, the next uh, the move or plan of action. Now I'm gonna, just gonna do a bit of greasy. Sun's going down on tea, new bumper on. I've got to put another plate on eventually. It'll probably be the last thing I do. Now I'm just going to put the bolts on top. And I've got some stainless steel um, Allen key head ones because they're good. And I saw uh, another MG owner do this. Uh, so we went to Tommy Graham's and uh, got some from my good friend Jack, who's a big TE fan. Some genuine Rimmers uh, wing brackets are going on next. Look, MG Rover. See him? Oh two of them. So uh, one on that side and one on that side. We're racing against the dark. It's going to go dark and, and, and I've still got like a long way to go. It's going to be proper like bush mechanics at, at any moment. It's on. 
of a limb bracket on. Oh, it's finished. Wow, there was a bit of a rush at the end because it's uh, went dark. Uh, Mother Nature went dark. But uh, as you can see here, there's a new wing, there's a new bumper, and there's a, another new wing over here, and it's finished. Well, the front end's finished anyway. Um, but what? But we're not quite finished because uh, from that was time of, as you as you know, got to put the arch liners in on a, a drag on a. Um, a light day when it's light so you'll see that um, and then uh, uh, there's a few other little bits and bobs I've got to do but other than that it, structurally it's good and uh, on the, on Thursday now he's going to his first show a little ca classic car meeting uh, so he can show off his uh, YouTube showbiz career uh, and you know and people can go and watch his uh, process from being the cheapest ZR 160 in the country to uh, uh, transforming him into uh, a very OEM looking ZR. Uh, I'm knackered, completely knackered. But next time I won't finish here because next time I see you, we'll be in the light and we'll be putting uh, arch liners or socks on and a few other little bits and bobs to finish him off. I think we're going to even do a bit of painting underneath. There's a couple of bit of rough spots what came up underneath these wings on the actual body what need addressing. So we'll get that. Uh, so you'll see us then, and uh, to next time, see you in the day. Bye. Right, so we're back the next day. It's kind of light. And uh, now where you can see a bit better in the light, uh, with his wings are on and he's looking sweet as a nut. But uh, we've got to, got to jack him back up, put some stangs under him and get those arch liners back in because he went a bit dark, very dark, you know, around the torchlight. So we've come back and we're going to try and get it before it goes dark again. And uh, get some arch liners in and uh, a few other bits and bobs, there's a couple of like bare metal spots what we have to grind off to uh, pay a bit of attention to so they don't rust up but let's get on with it. Here and I got uh, 
got a genuine uh, Rover one there, but uh, I didn't want to pay a lot of money for him to get some more, so I uh, went on eBay and uh, got some uh, cheap looking similar ones that should do the job, but you never know, they might not, but you know, you take that risk with eBay. Rimmers were just a bit expensive, even though they were good. We did another kind of fleet, what's not been on YouTube. That got done on Rimmers' um, little uh, screw press studs and the arch, but uh, it um, was a bit too much dirt. It was a bit dear to do now, both arches. So I've got some recycled, brand new, well, nearly brand new second hand uh, arch liners from Maddie, because the old ones, as you saw, we had to cut them off. So. Now the only problem is on this side, the, the top one goes in, in there, goes in the top here, underneath there, but it, it, it's only a bit rusty, so uh, the hole is a bit bigger than it should be, so I can't, I can't actually get one in there, and it's a shame because that's how you put them in, you, you put them, you get them lined up, you put them in there, and you put the, the top one in first, and then you fit all the rest in, so, but we can't do it that, so we're, we're going to have a go in this line, fit it in the best we can. But we just we just finished up doing a bit more greasing, so the, all the arches are well protected. Um, so it's, uh, it's all ticky t boo. Luckily, no isn't going out in the winter this next coming winter. He's going into a bit of storage, so it should be all right, mate. <laughs> that works. Arch liners are rubbish. What a what a crap design. And the most annoyingest things in the world. And I've got I've got press goods, what are screws, you better just pushing in with your fingers. I could get pushing ones with my fingers, but they don't fit. And it's a dirty job. No wonder people say leave them out because you you you, you can wash them out, you know, because these are awful things to trap all that all that dirt and then it goes rusty. But you've got to keep it in because it's OEM. So you gotta you gotta be patient, but it's an art run of art of the job. So there's a there's a lip that runs round here. Now down here it screws into the bottom of the wing, there's about three screws. And if you've got mud flaps, that's where it goes on there. But the bit at the top doesn't need to be on this side of the wing, it needs to be on the inside of the wing. So I'm just you can see me now I'm just pushing it back in and it you have to hurt your hands, but it works, it goes in. That's making all that cracky noise, it's the, the arch liner popping behind the, the wing. There you go, some uh, Tommy Graham special in Markham. Go and see, go and see Jack and get some screws. And uh, just need some uh, washes so they sit on top. Going to use me, me last genuine uh, Rimmer's um, Press stud, cum screw stud, the uh, arch liner clip. See, that's the genuine article. That is TE. He's, he's finished, he's got his, 
It's got a, two new wings on, a bumper, um, lots of stainless steel nuts everywhere. I've still got to put the, the sill covers back on him and a few other things. But uh, from uh, buying the cheapest MG ZR 160 in the country back in January 2021, and he became Noel, who we have here, um, he, he's not turned out to, too bad. Oh, he's, he's just locked himself. He's, he's got a habit at the moment of locking himself. Got to sort that out. But he's, uh, he's, he's looking complete, but he's, he's not 100%. He's about... 85%, I think 85%, so I've got to put sills, something going to tell you in a minute what we've got to put on, and there's a bit of interior knickknacks I've got to do. Uh, but pretty much, he's pretty much sorted. And uh, one thing I didn't say in this video is recently, about two months ago, Noel's old owner, Ian, who lives in Lancashire, uh, put, uh, put a new timing belt and uh, VVC belt on for us. Uh, we went down and visited him and paid him a bit of folding and got his uh, belts done. So that's the most important thing on these one six is get the belts done and it's done. Um, now he's looking fab dabadozy, you know, in his, in his gleaming X Power Grey paint. And the second hand bumper came from Maddie in Scotland. That came from her. Fog lights came from her. Uh, the wings. This one came off one in Preston on a scrapper. That one on that side came out of a local scrapper and we got it sprayed at our lads at uh, Morecambe, uh, Morecambe Customs. Uh, good lads, go and see them, do a good job. Um, and now we uh, exciting, I think. We'll maybe take Noel on a few road trips and a few car shows and we'll go from there. And then, uh, yeah, so the next part of Noel is actually fit the new tailgate to him because this one is a bit rusty. Um, and uh, but the one big part is what's hiding in here. You won't be able to see it actually. But in there, I'll bring you closer. Actually, I'll bring you closer. Now this one, uh, well, that came from your car parts. That centre pipe. Now that underneath is a genuine Gen Speed off a 160. I swapped it an interior with Josh. He's a, a quite a, a lad that came up from Lincoln. He does quite a lot of ZR stuff on the groups, and he's Mark II ZR. Uh, he wanted interior out of Noel's old interior, so I said, oh, I'll swap you my interior for your exhaust. So I've got a proper gen speed. Now that will be going on Noel very soon. Um, and it will quiet him down a hell of a lot. He's so loud, ridiculously loud, and he shouldn't be that loud. You know, he, he just sounds like a right, what's the word? I think he sounds a bit uh, chavvy. <laughs> so he's... So that one down there, that will be coming off and we'll be having a nice tip of a, a genuine gen speed. Because a, a genuine gen speed is what they actually fitted to ZRs from factory. It was like an optional extra, you could get a gen speed. So it's, it's OEM, you know, I'm not going chav, it is OEM. So uh, when that goes on, we'll do a noise test compared to Holder and see how much more meatier and nicer he sounds, you know, and with a standard, uh, Centre section on him, you know that be that quiet him down a lot. And uh, as you might see in, in a BRM video, I did a bit of sound deadening. Uh, we'll, we'll do that I know as well, so it would be a lot more quieter for cruising on the road. And so he's not like a big angry bee. <laughs> What's annoying as hell. So uh, we'll, I think we'll end this video now. And uh, if you've enjoyed Noel's build today and learnt stuff, give us a comment, give us a like. You know, always give us a like, you know, it gets the video seen so other like-minded MGZR people can see it. Um, and uh, make sure, I've, I've actually not, before you make sure, make sure to go and check the Patreon out. It's behind the scenes of this build. And I have a guy on there at the moment who, uh, who pays for me to, to give quality content like this. And we have a good chat. He's a nice guy. He lives down south and he's got a, a monogram 160. Um, so we have some we have some good band to talk about 160s and ZRs and stuff. So if you want to talk to me, TE, all day long about ZRs, get on Patreon. Um, and um, remember to uh, click that big bell. Ding!